the way this collector displays his guitars might scare you. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodyte's Guitar Show. All right, so here's the photo. Are you absolutely terrified for the safety of all these SGs or what? Chad sent me this photo about a year ago, and I've never been able to forget it because of just how crazy it is. Like, is it actually safe to hang guitars upside down like this? Because just in case it isn't clear here, the only thing that is securing these to the wall is a regular stand, what you normally put your headstock in, and it's just cradling one horn of the SG, and then down here they have another wooden block in the wall that basically just has a bar sticking off of it, so the SG doesn't swing, it keeps it stable. But judging by the fact that we have at least 13 SGs in here, if you count the double neck twice, being hung upside down for such an extended period of time, it must be safe. So I had to try this for myself. Because let's face it, this is a very interesting way to display all your guitars because you can fit a lot more in. Normally you're pretty limited in how many guitars you can reasonably display in one space. So let's go ahead and give this a try. I've got my regular Gibson stand here with a Gibson Guitar of the Week SG that we have not reviewed quite yet. So let's put it in our holder here. All right, so far so good. And now let's support the neck, kind of similar to what that bar would be doing. And yeah, okay. I would say it probably would be stable, although it still gives me the heebie-jeebies. But wouldn't it be better to have two mounts, you know, one for each side of the horn? Then I might feel a little bit more comfortable. So let's go ahead and mock that up right here. Unfortunately, these stands aren't perfectly even, but let's get that going on here. But to my surprise, there's a strange phenomenon that happens when you have both of the horns secure. The guitar wants to tip up, so you would need something else to keep this stable so it doesn't fall. So at the end of the day, will I display my guitars like this? Probably not, but it does seem completely safe in a strange roundabout way. If you have very limited space or you just want all your guitars to be a nice collage together. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Would you display your SGs upside down like this? But anyways, while we're at it, let's go ahead and take a look at his collection. Because he's got a lot of cool ones. We got a couple of reissues over here that I really can't identify any further from this photo. Looks like we have like a 64 style SG over here. That looks like it might just be Gibson USA in production rather than custom shop from what I can see. But then over here, we've got a nice Angus Young signature. We reviewed one of those in this episode. You've got your little problem child thing on the headstock. In fact, we documented the prototype of that guitar. But I think the reason why that one looks so extraordinary is that looks like an ebony finish to me. And as far as I'm aware, the production ones did not come in that finish. So maybe that one has been redone. I'm not sure. The next one, we have some sort of like a Les Paul custom going on here with three humbuckers. Looks like we got our regular volume and tone controls here. But if you actually look on the neck, you have trapezoid inlays like a Les Paul standard. And then all the way up here, we've got Grover Imperial tuners. And then you've got the flower pot for our inlay. And back around 2014, there was a classic custom limited edition that had these specs, as far as having the flower pot and the trapezoid inlays. But that third pickup had to have been added to that one, as well as the gold hardware, unless this just happens to be a weird, freaky custom order. Our next SG, I really can't identify that one because it just looks like a regular SG standard that's probably been modified with all gold hardware. It's got the cool vibrola. It doesn't look custom shop based on what I can see from the headstock. The next Les Paul custom's a little bit tricky as well. Three humbuckers with a Bigsby, cherry sunburst finish, it looks like we got all the regular inlays, and it could be a custom shop, but our next SG has a very similar format as far as three humbuckers and a Bigsby. However, this is actually a real model if you're interested in one of these. It's known as the SG Deluxe. They offered it them in a few different colors, but they've got three pickups. They had a flame maple top just for fun. They also have the stock Bigsby, and you get the cool split diamond inlays on the bound fretboards. And the other thing that makes them kind of strange is they do indeed have the Gibson custom emblem on their headstock and just have single ply binding around it. I always thought these guitars kind of looked fake due to that, but no, it is a real model. You don't have to be scared of these things. I have not documented one yet, although I think one day I will. Although typically you find these things in chrome, so I think the gold was definitely replaced. Next up, kind of another mystery Les Paul custom. It looks really good. We've got some sort of a mirrored pit guard on it. All gold, three humbuckers. 
Following that, we've got some sort of a black SG that's probably been modified with three humbuckers. But I'd be curious to learn more about this one. It's some sort of a blue burst Les Paul. Probably a classic custom that's been redone would be my best guess from this far away shot. Because you can tell it's got the rosewood style fretboard. It could be baked maple depending on the model. But it still has the Gibson custom emblem. So that's one of the very desirable classic custom. You can also tell it doesn't have the binding on the back. But next up in the SG territory, that looks like a mid-70s SG to me. Can't really date it any further from here. Looks like maybe a black classic or standard. This SG looks like it has some sort of a trim system on it. And then we have a matching standard over here to this custom. He's got a beautiful 335 figured. However, it's a little bit different than normal because it has a 355's custom fretboard as far as the block inlays and everything. So maybe that was a limited edition of some sort. Down here we've got a studio. That one looks pretty stock for the most part, desert burst like finish. Standard 68 style SG. But this one's pretty cool. It's probably either a 2018 Les Paul Classic or one of the split coil Les Paul Traditionals. Yeah, that's right. There's a P90 Les Paul Traditional out there that you can coil tap the P90s. I need to document one of those. However, it looks like it might be the classic, if I'm able to see that truss rod cover correctly. But this next one really has me intrigued. This looks like an SG Supreme to me, one of the early 2000s versions. They're not as fancy as a Les Paul Supreme in my opinion, but it is a flame top SG. They got the cool split parallelogram inlays, they're built up like an SG custom, they've got the gold hardware. And I guess now that I think about it, that's one of the early times where you can kind of see a fade finish within Gibson's catalog. I know in the past, I usually say, you know, it's around 2017, 2018 when the High Performance series really brought that to the limelight. But I guess I never really thought about this finish as a fade. But wow, check out this one. That's the nicest I've ever seen. <laughs> I went not mind owning that. However, you come over to this one, and it's got the regular inlays. And then it looks like it has a matching widowed headstock. So I'm not quite sure the story on that one. An easy explanation here would be, you know, mod collection has been messing with stuff. But, I mean, this photo was sent to me not necessarily before the mod collection, but I would have remembered that one had the mod collection had produced it. Because that's the other thing. He was telling me he has friends that work at Gibson, and they're the ones that gave him the idea to <laughs> hang his SGs like this. So maybe some of these are weird factory employees type guitars. Over here looks like some sort of Les Paul standard. We've got our double neck EDS 1275. Doesn't look like he's modified that too much. But this particular SG looks like a true vintage early 60s one to me from this one photo. But this SG, this one was called the Future Tribute because it's got the Steinberger tuners. That seems to line up pretty well as far as the finish. He's just modified it quite considerably, all blinged out with the chrome and the Bigsby's. I really want to know what the story of this Les Paul is going to be. It looks like it's a work in progress, but it's got this aqua burst finish with like a quilt top. Doesn't even look like it's been routed for a bridge or anything yet. I bet that thing will be sweet. But with this SG, it looks like it might be a gothic, judging by the fact that it only has the 12th fret inlay. There's a few different models that utilize something like that. However, here's what one of these looks like. That inlay is the star and moon which was the initial gibson logo before the gibson logo became a thing and amongst all the madness it looks like he's got a vintage gibson b2512 string you never forget looking at one of these things it's just kind of a smaller bodied acoustic that's 12 strings and they're relatively inexpensive if you're just looking for an older guitar to give you the tones associated with them for example this one's on reverb right now for only 1300 bucks but this Les Paul even has a matching headstock. This one kind of looks like a 2018-ish standard, but I could very well be wrong on that. And then we've got a couple of studios kicking around. That one might be a 2018 since it has the binding on it. Oh, and don't forget about his mini guitars he's also got hung up here. <laughs> so what a cool collection. If you have a cool collection of guitars that you'd like to share with the show, feel free to send it to my traytrogly at gmail.com email. And you never know, you might just get an episode made on your stuff. And oh, looking at this other one, it also looks like he has one of the MK series acoustics from the 70s. These things are strange for a couple of different reasons. A, the offset bridge. And B, the very unique headstock on it. The Gibson ES369 also utilized that headstock and a few other models, but it's very PRS-like, but before PRS was mainstream. But there were a lot of different models, some of them just as fancy as a The Les Paul. And just for fun, here's his collection of amps that he sent me. I couldn't tell you anything about any of these, but it sure does look like he knows how to have some fun. 
However, he did have a question about his most recent acquisition that he got on trade. He was looking to learn more about this standard silver burst. So this is actually part of the Showcase Edition series, which was done up in the very late 80s. We're talking like 1988, 1989. And there were a few different models associated with this one. The three pickup SG Custom in red, the two pickup blue standard, the white 335. Yeah, that's right, 335 with EMG pickups. There's actually a Chet Atkins that's part of the Showcase Edition. I I'm not sure if that one counts as having EMG pickups, but it does have some sort of a pickup within it. Then there was also the WRC version, which you can check out this episode if you need to learn more about that strange Gibson model. But the big claim to fame is they had the EMG pickups. For nearly all of them except for the random P100 gold top. So the standard being offered in a teardrop shaped silver burst, that's pretty much one of the only times in Gibson history, up until very recently with the Adam Jones signatures, that you could get that on a standard. So of the showcase editions, these standards, they're relatively popular, not like crazy, but they've got the ebony fretboard, they've got the trapezoid inlays. I mean, once you replace the EMG pickups in them, most traditionalists will really like it. But each of the showcase editions got around 200 of them made. But as far as the back, you don't have any continuations of the burst. It's just straight up ebony. But you do have the nice little decal on the back. And it's really nice that his still has the original case and the COA. But he was saying that he traded a 2009 quilt top R9 for it. To which he says may have been a stupid move on his part. Yeah, maybe. Now this isn't the exact guitar he traded, but this is what I remember seeing on Reverb that was of similar vintage that I totally regret not buying because somebody bought it and they, they flipped it for like 10 grand. But check out this reissue. It's like a natural with a purple burst mix going on here. But this was a true 59 reissue. It's just an absolutely gorgeous piece and it's got that quilt maple top that we're talking about. So how much is a 2009-ish R9 quilt top worth? I would say in the ballpark of 5,000 plus or minus 500. It really just depends on the top and condition and the color. And unfortunately, I don't have that to really answer the question. But how much is a showcase edition standard worth? Honestly, a couple of years ago, they were only about 2,500 bucks. These showcases really aren't that popular, even though the EMGs are stock. It's just not what most Gibson guys want. But there has been collector interest slowly rising on these, and the whole silver burst craze of a couple of years ago saw these things start to get more appreciation. So I have seen these sell in the three to $5,000 range. And this particular example is looking pretty nice. However, I probably would have stuck with the R9 personally. Currently, there's none on the market, but if he needed to sell that one today, I'd probably suggest listing it for $4,500 and see what the market might be willing to pay today. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed this unique episode tonight. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.